have you ever sparred your mother? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what would happen. Maybe she would be angry at you if you if you went easy on her. But maybe you'd have to well, get easy on her. Cause... When I was younger, like, and I didn't behave good, and I didn't eat my meals, like eat your food, like <laughs> and it was like impossible to block. Yes, I do This is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today, I am very excited to be joined by Marco Zoror, the star of Fist of the Condor, which is coming to digital Blu-ray and DVD on May 23rd, 2023. It is a stylish, unique throwback to classic martial arts films that has an amazing kind of Latin American flair and some really good action. I'm going to talk to him and spar with him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. Hola, encantado de conocerte. Hola, que tal? <laughs> and that's the extent of my Spanish. So. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me. I like to sometimes think that I could probably take most of the people that I interview, but definitely not this man, Marco Zoror. He would beat me up and beat me up beautifully and stylishly. He is the star of Fist of the Condor. It's coming to digital Blu-ray and DVD on May 23rd, 2023. It is a stylish film. It is a kind of throwback love letter to martial arts movies, and it just has this really unique look and feel, and I am so excited to talk to you about it. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> of course, of course. So you train you train martial arts? Uh no, I just I just uh lift weights and work out. So. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh I imagine that you would uh you you would easily handle me. Uh, okay. No, but it would look great. It would look really great. You'd have all these really great looking moves. Um I'm a little disappointed that you grew your hair. I like made sure to clean my my uh head up for this interview because I wasn't sure which version of your character you were gonna show up as. It looks like you're somewhere uh, in between. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess you know the first question is like this role this movie feels like kind of the perfect fit for you like how did you get involved in this did you like get on early were you involved in this when it was kind of like in the writing stage of the planning stages how did you get involved in this film well no this film was part of i i co-create this film with ernesto diaz espinosa when we're in the middle of quarantine and Basically, I was in this beach house of a friend uh, in a town, uh, in a summer town where it was totally isolated because of quarantine. And I was there just, you know, because I couldn't go come back to, to the U.S. where I was living at the moment. So I kind of was trapped there. And, you know, we were in a stage where I was like rethinking my whole life. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because we didn't know what was going to happen with the quarantine, with the COVID, with the theater, with the film industry. So I was just, you know, meditate, train, and just kind of thinking what to do next. Right. And for some reason, I felt this need to just shoot something and, and express myself and put on tape, on film my journey like i wanted to i wanted to put it out there just if it was as my last project to kind of say thanks to all what inspired me as a martial artist and all my journey right mm -hmm. philosophy nutrition you know everything that i would love to see when i was 15 years old like i would i would love to have a guidance like this right or, or something like to someone to, to can express uh, you know all this journey through a book, through a video, through a movie. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like, I told her, and it's like, look, we have to do this. It's, and this, the town was beautiful, beautiful sunrise, beautiful sunsets, like the scenarios were beautiful. And I'm like, look, man, even if this is going to be the last thing we do, you know, uh, without any business behind it, right? Because we didn't know we were just going to shoot it and then just see what we do with it. Like maybe put it out there online, people can see it or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we just you know I gave him all my notes as a martial artist I gave him my notes as a nutrition in philosophy in training and he grabbed that and he just went very deep on seeing all going doing like a little homework on all the the genre films and as a filmmaker what inspired him and he came up with this beautiful story you know about this book that cost, that contains all this notes and knowledge that it happens to have 
a part of a lot of my notes, you know? So he mixed kind of reality with fantasy and came up with this beautiful, and when I was reading the script, I was like, wow, man, we got to do a, we got to do a movie. <laughs> we got to do something like we, we need to take it. We need to do it seriously now. And, and, and man, life kind of happens. And, and suddenly we were just shooting in the middle of quarantine, wow. uh, you know, in these beautiful scenarios. And I called my team of people that worked with me in previous movies down in Chile and, and told them about this project. And it, was, it sounded crazy because it was very complicated times. But at the same time, it was fun because nobody was doing anything, right? So we just went out and shoot and, and we shot this, this beautiful story without knowing and then it just struck there you know like for mm -hmm. example we have we had this scene with a condor and we didn't have a the condor it's like a wild savage animal like <laughs> you cannot even find in the zoo they're in rehab like there's not even it's hard to see them on the zoo and they're always behind like so it was not even possible to think that we can have a condor in our movie uh, or a scene with a condor and yeah the, the script was crazy right and then we were just you know, we just did it. And, you know, things start opening up and we were like doing posts very slowly because of, you know, budget things and timing and all that. And and suddenly I got this call to do John Wick because we did the trailer of this. Well, what we showed with a little trailer and I show it to my people when they call me when I was going to LA for a festival. And then that trailer happened to arrive to chat the Husky's ha hands and he just called me and offered me this big, the biggest role of my career. Oh, wow. So awesome. it's so magical how life works because maybe if I would have never done that, if I would have just, okay, it's time to change, you know, it's time to leave this on the side and now think what you're going to do with your life and without and not staying honest to that true calling that I had, I maybe would have never been in John Wick 4, like doing what I love to do, like my biggest shot of my career, because I didn't, I would have never reached to that people saying, oh, you know, I did this video, this movie, like, you know, things mm -hmm. work in a very mysterious way. So this is the way that I read it. And and for me, Fist of the Condor is just to answer this question that you made, that is a little it's a simple question, but it's a little more complicated answer. <laughs> so Fist of the Condor represents, it's an honest expression of who I am as a human being, as a martial artist, mm -hmm. you know, and and I my challenge was to stay as truth as possible as I could to do like what you said, a love letter to genre and to everything that inspired my career and and me and, and Ernesto as a filmmakers. So yeah, that's what that's what Fist of the Condor is, you know. Yeah. And so many follow-up questions. I love I love that explanation. That was just a great kind of recitation of what happened. I really love, you know, that you, a, you got to spend quarantine in this beautiful location because I think a lot of people during quarantine were having you know similar thoughts that you had like what's going to happen next what what are we going to do at least you were I don't know maybe it didn't feel at the time but you were lucky enough to be in this beautiful isolated place where you could really think and you know uh, meditate on what your next step would be and then this film you know was the result of that so that's uh that's very random and like you said it's very kind of fortuitous that this all happened that way well maybe not that this all happened that way, but at least that you made the most of your situation. Yeah, there was someone up there helping for sure, man. Because yeah. what how how this movie happened, it was just miracle after miracle, you know. And same thing how we did the condor. Like we <laughs> shot the scenes imagining that we have a condor without anything, mm -hmm. right? But we did the shots, this you know, the angles and all that. And so when we were in post-production, we we're like, okay, well, the only way that we can accomplish these scenes is doing like a 3D condor. Mm -hmm. And be, that's impossible. Like, that would have cost more than the whole movie. Like for us, it was impossible to do. So we were like, what we do? Like it's in, like, uh, you know, so we were just, just waiting there. Like for some reason, we just, because we were not in a rush because of COVID and all that, we couldn't even release the anything we couldn't do. So when I did John Wick that, you know, and, and I finished shooting and all that, and I go back to Chile and we have this kind of, offline cut of the movie without the condor but with the scenes right mm -hmm. and it's like what we're we gonna do man like how are we gonna finish this and suddenly you know uh, actually my mother that is in the movie is she's the woman uh, the woman condor the master <laughs> she's my mother oh, wow. she's 
she she was the one that started with martial arts with me when I was a kid. It's part of my inspirations as a martial artist, right? She she grew up in a in a she served in a Buddhist temple in Peru and she gave uh, you know speeches and all that and you know and then you know in Chile she trained karate and she was like one of the first women black belt in my country. She was you know wow. cool story. So she's like, hey, you know what? I have a I have a friend that you know he sent me these videos that there's a a condor that goes to his house to eat and he lives next to the mountains. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, okay, okay, listen, are you sure there is a condor? <laughs> because that's not possible. It's like, yeah, like, no, I, I'm sure it's like li this little like eagles, like, yeah, it's like a vulture everywhere. or something. Yeah, yeah, like a vulture or whatever. <laughs> like, no, it's not a condor. It's not like a condor is like a more than a six, like it's, I don't know, like when it opens the wings, it's like more than six foot long. It's crazy, right? It's like huge bird. It's like, no, 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 it's not possible. Yeah. And like, and then I start like kind of shaking and like kind of like I couldn't believe. And it's like, hey, show me a video. So she did show me the video, and it was a fuck, like it was a condor, like that's, for real. That's amazing. And then my brain would explode it, and I'm like, okay. I call my VFX, the VFX companies. Look, look, you know, we need this. We need to capture this, and then we can, you know, whatever. And then we we coordinate the whole thing. We went up the house, like praying, because we didn't know when the condor came to eat. Like it's every day, <laughs> but then I blocked my whole schedule when I was in Chile to go. Okay, we need to capture this condor time. Yeah, just condor you know, time. So yeah. we just went there and the, the guy told us like, no, it usually comes from this time to this time. Like, you know, so we were up there putting the whole camera set up and then like kind of thinking, okay, it's a wild animal. So our, our hope was if we can capture it doing things similar of what we plan in the movie, right? With the camera angle and stuff like that. And we're like, damn, okay, how we do this? So, okay. We need food, so maybe we put food in different areas. So we put the camera set up, so he lands in that area, and we capture him landing and then taking off, and then maybe, and then there's a scene. I don't know if you you saw the movie, right? Yeah, multiple times. You know, yeah. the, you know the end move with the end scene when he's eating the brains of the bad mm -hmm. guy. So we we mimic, we 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 put like a pretending like a like something there, and we put food. So we're hoping he lands. And then start eating, right? That food. Yeah. And then we put, we measure the same angle of the camera that we shot the movie. So then we can just cut the thing and just put it there with the whatever, right? Yeah. But that was thinking on a miracle. First, that the condor arrives. And second, that he behaves the way it worked for the camera angle. Because he could have just arrived, grab, and then leave or whatever. And yep. would it be all over the place? And man, you saw the movie. Like believe it or not, we haven't. We had an actor condor, a condor that was <laughs> he he hit right the marks we needed for the shots to finish our movie. It was amazing, unbelievable. We we're like everybody was praying to this like this. Like we were like it was a, a magical moment, you know. Yeah, and that is that is amazing. I hope that Condor has an IMDb page now. Like, it, it, you know, at least it won. Maybe maybe it'll be yeah, the sequel. I have to, yeah, we have to do an IMDb page for for this. Yeah. Condor, for sure. <laughs> but I love that because, like, as you said, like a VFX Condor was probably your only option before, and that would have cost a lot. And I think it would have it wouldn't have looked right. It would have taken no, away no, from the it film. It would have ruined the movie. Yeah, like it wouldn't have had this throwback feel if you had this VFX Condor in there. But yeah, I. I'm a, that's an amazing story. That's like you keep saying, like some someone was watching out for this movie. Someone wanted this movie to get made because it seems yeah. like yeah. everything yeah. just uh, worked out for it. Yeah. I also, cool story. I really also really love that you kind of like you seem to make the you know, the need to make this movie was almost like a farewell letter. Like if something else happens, like this is how I've trained. This is how I got here. I don't know if, I'm gonna, if any other movies are going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to make this documentary almost or this kind of like you know recitation of what i'm doing just so that it can be out there and that was what then caused you know your biggest role so it's like you were making this as almost like a goodbye letter and that kind of caused your career to then take off and so you know i love that 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 kind of duality there yes yeah that was that was very cool because at the end feast of the condor like when i see that movie it means so much to me because it's like my culture my vision as a martial artist from latin america 
you know, that we receive all this influence from different places in the world, mm -hmm. but we also love martial arts and we also love the genre, but we have our culture. So then it's like how I can do my own version of this. What would happen if I, if I'm suddenly like back in the days having studios making martial art movies, what, what that would look like with our culture, with our actors, with our music, mm -hmm. with our like scenarios, right? With our way of fighting, like, I needed to stay honest to that. And then me, okay, what I've trained, I've trained MMA, uh, boxing, uh, you know, um, well, MMA, and it's part of everything, but, yeah. you know, animal flow, gymnastics, and and then, okay, so what do my wooden dummy look like? Okay, the way that I do it is different than the Wing Chun because I have the high blocks and then, you know, the, the training with the logs, like the plyometrics that I do, the athletic training that I do like how I could put it into this movie so there's little things of reality mm -hmm. of who I am as a martial artist and who I am as a human being it's the same with philosophy the same with nutrition when we're when we're eating and we're talking about what 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 food we're eating all that is based on uh, uh you know a long journey as a or a, a part of my long journey as a martial artist you know yeah no so exactly. it's, but you don't have many chances in life to do something so honest like that, I believe. You know, you, you do roles, you have fun. Don't get me wrong, it's fun to be cold and have a role and then just perform and have fun with it. But there's not many chances in life where you were able to just, you know, be 100% honest and, and express yourself 100% as a, as a, in everything, you know. Yeah, it it feels very authentic. I think that comes through, you know, in the film is that this does feel like, you know, a very honest type of work, even though it has some fantastical elements, it has some other stuff. It feels like something that is very grounded and also very kind of like, it, it's very personal to you. And I love that that personality kind of also extends to your mother training you. I didn't know that. And that is amazing that in the movie, she is the one that is training you. And then I imagine in your real life, she's also the one that probably trained you and kind of got disciplined you and, and gave you and still a lot of this kind of yeah. discipline in your life uh from a very young age yeah yeah she was that role like <laughs> she was that role like you know she she's a real uh, master in 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 of life you know what i'm saying it's hard to beat that uh for me as a you know she was a very important uh, she's a very important piece in my life in terms of inspiration and everything and and as I'm, and we connect through martial arts since I was born you know so you know it was a very cool to to have that opportunity you know what I'm saying yeah to and that's there and leave it there for eternity because you know at the end this, this is what it is you know yeah and that's I, I also just love that like you've had this shared interest throughout your life I think a lot of people you know they, they, they grow closer and further apart from their their mother and maybe that maybe in uh, latin american culture it's different i know that the, the mother is kind of more you know ingrained in, in a central part of the family but like i love that you have had this shared interest and this shared passion with your mother throughout your entire life and it has you know gone from birth all the way up until your most recent film yeah yeah man um have you ever sparred your mother <laughs> <No, no, no. laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what would happen. Maybe she would be angry at you if you if you went easy on her. But maybe you would have to well, go easy on was, her. Cause... When I was younger, like, and I didn't behave good, or I didn't eat my meals, like, eat your food, like, <laughs> it was like impossible to block. Yes, I do remember that. <laughs> That's why you were so disciplined because you had to eat quickly and then block. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I also love that you your character you played two characters in this movie. You know, you played you and then I guess evil you. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Like, did I assume you didn't like grow your hair out during COVID and then shave it for like half the film? Like, what was it? But what was it like, like playing two characters and kind of like having that dual role in this film? Was that uh, difficult? Was it fun? Maybe it was fun. It was fun. I think um, exploring those edges of personalities that we have is always fun. Fun to explore and give that give give you that opportunity mm -hmm. to kind of explore. Now. You know the movie doesn't go so deep on on the twin brother, you know, uh, but I do looking forward on, you know, the moment that they meet and the moment that they fight. That's why I'm very excited and I'm trying to 
you know, get people excited to support the movie. And, and because I want to continue the story, I want to see these two guys fighting and I want, I want to make, you know, I'm training hard. I want to make something amazing, you know, and to see if I can bring that personality through the fight scene and, and see these two sides, the dark side and the good side or whatever, how, you know, these two sides, personalities fighting each other and colliding. And that's going to be interesting challenge you know yeah i think I, I think the movie makes you like leaves you wanting that and I, I i agree with you i hope that that happens and i think it'd be interesting yeah like you have two people doing the same kind of martial arts except one is i don't know darker you know dirt pl- fights a little dirtier the other is trying to fight more pure and and how th- those would interact and how that kind of fight would play out i think that'd be fascinating to watch yeah cool man um and so I guess I was going to ask, like, if you trained for this movie differently than, like, you trained for other roles, it sounds like you probably did just because of the, the circumstances of how this movie was made. But was there anything that you did differently for this? Or do you kind of train for all your martial arts roles similarly, you know, very disciplined, you know, focus on uh, nutrition and, and exercise and things like that? No, definitely diet. I tune it. I change. I did some different things for, with my nutrition. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of different things on my training because my previous film on this one was, I think Redeemer with Ernesto. That was a long time ago. Uh, one movie I did before this one. Um, According to IMDb, you've got, uh, in, well, I don't know the one with Ernesto. The previous movies are Green Ghost, uh, Invincible. Yeah. See, Re- Redeemer's no, 2014. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like to be like, this movie, it's, you know, it has of my new way of like nutrition and training, everything, because I was able to grab everything that I've been doing until that point from my last movie that like, was Redeemer, because the other ones were movies that they call me and I just perform and that's it, that I was training and I just, but my, my previous movie was Redeemer, like the one that I was kind of wanting to express myself as a martial artist. So the type of fight scene, and for example, in Redeemer, I was, be, before I, I did Redeemer, I was about to become an M- MMA fighter. Mm-hmm. So after Mandrill, and after some movies that I did, like Undisputed and Machete Kills and all that, I will, I know, before Machete Kills, I was like, look, uh, you know, I might want to start fighting. So then I, I did like five years of like MMA training. And then Robert Rodriguez called me and that was a big thing for my career. It was like, wow, you know what? I, I got to continue approaching the movies then. I'm not sure yeah. fight. after like, I was about to get ready to start fight. Like I was training really hard to become a fighter. Like, so, but then when Robert Rodriguez called me, there was like a, someone up there told me, no, 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 don't, this is the way. Don't, 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 don't yeah. distract yourself. So that was Robert, man. And, 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 after that, I was like, okay, I got to give it a shot. So then we decided to do uh, Redeemer. Uh, and then it's like, look, you know, uh, I want to make in this movie to make it feel this MMA feel. So we did, I did a very cool MMA fight on that film mm-hmm. to kind of showcase everything that I've learned as an MMA fighter. But then long, all these years, then Fist of the Condor, it kind of shows my my change as a martial artist and, and, and my evolution as in my, in my journey, when I start adding the animal flow, mm-hmm. even more like the training with plyometrics and power training with elastic bands and, and all this mobility that is more freedom. It's not so MMA, you know, it's more like it incorporate, it, it, it adds this more acrobatic and more like stylish stuff mm-hmm. about movement. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. then that, that was perfect because we needed to create a style that it was the fist of the condor, you know? So then we thought, okay, the, the condor is our, our, our animal on the flag, the Chilean flag, our national animal. So then I started like doing all these open <laughs> things and I started like incorporating my, and I, I no, I'm going into that direction with my body. And, and that's how the fist of the condor happened, you know? So. It, I will say it's the other way around. It's like the movie reflects a stage that I am in my life, basically. Yeah. And I just tweak and adapt to to make it happen, you know. 
Yeah, no, that's, uh, I mean, that makes perfect sense. And I'm glad that you, you know, did not go into MMA because you have to protect, you have to protect your face, right? That's, that's your moneymaker on top of your biceps, your, your face. So I'm glad yeah, that your yeah, face yeah. is staying nice and nice and clean. <laughs> yeah, but I'm doing all the bad guys. So I, I, I was thinking, well, maybe, you know, I'll look even meaner, you know. Uh, no, yeah, but you're right. It's like, I, I like to do things the right way. And yeah. I knew that if I was going to fight, then if I wanted to be good, it needed to be my 24 seven. I could not be in both worlds at the same time. You know, yeah. if I accomplish a good career in movies or in MMA, it will demand a hundred percent of my time. And if, and some MMA fighters are transitioning into movies, but they already commit years and years and years to that. They accomplish something. And then they decide, okay, I'm done with this. Maybe I'm going to do this, you see. Yeah. But to do both on the top level is, is not that, it's not an easy thing, you know. Yeah. And like you said, like, you know, now you're trained you, for Fist of the Condor, you train more kind of with movement and, and acrobatic and things like that, which is great for cinema, great for kind of these like beautiful martial arts fights. But you're right. In MMA, it's probably not as useful. I'm sure there's some things that you could take from that and, and use in a fight. But I think MMA, you're probably more for power and for, you know, endurance rather than kind of like trying to make beautiful flowing types of fights. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I think for Redeemer it worked perfect because it depends on the role, like MMA, like everything that I learned in MMA, it works for more realistic kind of movies, characters where it's just like contemporary, you know, you need to be this badass guy and just need to have a very good skill level in fighting. That's mm -hmm. MMA works perfect for that. But in a move in a world like Fist of the Condor, then you need a little more than that. You need to be able to kind of feed that fantasy with movements. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I, I believe I like that. You know? Yeah, and especially if it's a love letter to you know classic martial arts, that is kind of a hallmark. High flying, you know, elaborate fights is, is something that people would look for in a film, and that you get that in Fist of the Condor. You probably wouldn't yeah. get you don't get that as much in an MMA fight. It's exciting in a different way. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also, you know, you mentioned that you, to make this film, you kind of like called together, like people that you worked with. I was going to ask, like, I imagine the kind of like, like Latin American martial arts circles. They're probably, you probably go in them a lot. So I was going to ask if you like knew all the people that you brought into this film. It sounds like you did. Were there anyone that you were able to work with that you hadn't worked with before? Or was it, was everyone in this film kind of someone that you had crossed path with? In your in your career well basically the team is the same team that i've used in all my movies mm -hmm. yeah in terms of filmmakers like dp produ producer uh director writer like ernesto and then you know the, the music composer all that but then of course the talent you always need to kind of bring some new faces and stuff like that but you always i always use people that i find spots for the people that I always work with mm -hmm. because of course it's hard to find in Chile people with experience to be able to deliver on screen you know um, so usually what I do I try to cast mar real martial artists that are trained in a high level and then I, I, I try to teach them take some time to teach them screen fighting like mm -hmm. to under okay this is your abilities you already but at least for me, it gives me the confidence that they are well trained, that they're not going to get tired, that they're not going to injure themselves easily, that they can take a hit, that they can take a fall, that they understand what their body. And now, you know, with that, I kind of adapt what they do for the camera, for camera fighting, you know, and, and that's a process, you know, and, and so I usually do like an audition and all that. Uh, to to select like a like a little the team or the new people. Uh, in this case, I was lucky because I for the main villain we have a a, a Meyer. Yeah, he was uh, he was awesome. Yeah, he he is an actor that works in like soap operas in my country, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's oh, wow. very like sexy, <laughs> you know, and you see him in these things, and and you never imagine. Well, you am you, you know he has a good body, good build, so you kind of understand that he he trains, right? But he happens to be a master in karate. Oh, wow. You know, and that was perfect. And the parody was telling him, man, you should call it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, cool. So I did call him and then I invited him to rehearse, to do some previews and see, you know, how real it is that he is really trained or not, you know? Yeah. And then he was, he was very good. He was cool. And then, you know, 
he was perfect for the villain, man. And it's hard for me to find villains. That's why they always call me for villains in American movies. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I need, it's hard for me to find villains and people to go against, you know? Yeah, no, that's, and that's really lucky because the fact that he is kind of a, you know, a working actor that also is a master in karate, like, for the villain, you know, you need some more emotional connection. You need someone that can like carry the scene as well. I, you know, in some martial arts films, the villain could just come in and just like say, you know, now we fight and then you fight. But here, he had to really kind of dig in a little more and kind of become a character that you wanted to hate. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And so it sounds like I was going to ask about the fight choreography because I know that you do a lot of choreography as well, and I wasn't sh wasn't sure if you participated heavily in the choreography for this film it sounds like you did you helped yeah, 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 like map out the fights that's the way i i do it is like when i work with the different martial artists for example the other person that i brought that i thought that it was very very cool uh jose manuel uh, mm -hmm. from puerto rico he's done some movies in his country mm -hmm. he, and he's like tall like he's my same height and he's he's done he's done a lot of screen fighting so for me, it's like I cast, for me, casting is very important because like I said, it needs to be people that they know what they're doing in the fighting world because movies like this, they rely on the performance of the martial artists, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the fans want to see. So then there's no budget to go around it. There's no budget to get an actor and then put a stunt and then, nah, 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 and then, because the fight is not so exciting then I need to have other things, other elements. We need to like, you know, we need to bring people that it feels legit, you know, that, that, and fans know that, that they're educated and they, they, they want to do, they want to see the real deal. They don't want to see people pretending. Right. Yeah. So I, I tried to cast, like for example, Jose Manuel, you know, uh, I, we brought him from Puerto Rico. He was very cool. He also very hard work. And then what I do is like for each fight scene, I work with them and I try to, to go through a simple process of being in a real scenario. Like, for example, I go, okay, understanding the characters and the motivations, then I, I kind of, okay, okay, if you are the one that won the book and I'm here chilling, protecting the book, okay, let's think that you're going to attack me. You have that need, you have that anxiety. I don't, I, I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight you. I'm gonna to have to fight. So that already gives you like a little, a little guide of how the choreography should follow, or at least should mm -hmm. start, right? So he, so the, he's approaching. He's the one coming. So then, if he comes, I go, okay. How you attack me if you're from that far? And then he showed me options, and I go, oh, this is cool. But what about if I just do this and I avoid you and you go there? What do you do? How you react? And then, ah, okay, well, that works. Oh, no, maybe this is better. And then, and then it's a conversation. And we start creating from kind of a real a real moment. Yeah. Right? yeah. We try to create that real moment to see what the body language, what your instinct, how your instinct will respond to, to discover the movement instead of thinking of the movement. You see, and then and then also about rhythm, like camera rhythm, like, OK, I, I will like now I feel that I kind of try to feel the music behind what's happening or the rhythm behind what's happening. And I like to kind of sometimes break that rhythm or change the tempo. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, I tell, OK, what do you do if I do this? Boom. You'll do you'll do pop. And what about if I do pa pa instead of pa? What do you do? And then, then you start understanding, okay, how this sound. And because of the sound, you start creating this, this kind of melody that then you can break for the audience and that's and surprise them. So it's a very fun process, you know. That's the way I like to do it. I love that because it, it it sounds very collaborative. And also it sounds like you know, you are each taking advantage of your your own skills and the own your own styles. I like I love how you say, "What if I do this? What would you do?" And then you can he like you are not suggesting what he does. He or she is then going to kind of like naturally do what they would do, and it makes the fight both flow better and it also highlights the different elements that each of you are better at, which is a great exactly. way to do it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I love that. And um, another very noticeable thing about this film you see it on the cover is that that condor style. You mentioned you know the, the like open hands the. Uh, you know, bird kind of motifs, things like that. Like, 
how did you go about developing that style? Was there any, did you pull from other martial arts that you'd known or did you just kind of like think what, you know, think of like how a caller would look and then kind of like build out some techniques from that? Yeah, it was more that because I've been training martial arts my whole life. So I've done Kung Fu, I've done Karate. So I kind of done like open hands, and but I don't have a style. Like if you tell me what's the eagle style, I don't know. <laughs> What's the tiger style? I don't know. I just know this and this and like, <laughs> but I I don't I, I I gotta be honest. I've never trained like for too long. Uh, uh, doctrine to mm -hmm. tell you I'm a master in the style of kung. No, I just been training my whole life different style, different things, and putting all this information in my body that is more like a reflex, like. You know, uh, when I do animal flow and I start moving, suddenly it depends on what I'm thinking. I, okay, and then I pretend, and then and then my body understands it, its language and creates its own kind of way of moving. And that's how we we kind of you know create the this kind of movie. Like the same thing when I'm when I'm fighting, I was trying to add elements of this flow, this this mobility that that sometimes it's uh, you can feel that there's a con it's a condor style because it's not kung fu it's not taekwondo it's not if you see the fighting you you, you cannot recognize those that fighting with any style but you can oh there's some type there's some taekwondo oh no no there's some wing chun oh no no there's some you know so it's like and that's the beauty of it these are all the influences that i receive as a martial artist you know yeah i love that because it, it does fit right into this movie where it does feel like you have influences from other places, but then you kind of made it your own, you know, made it uh, your own style to kind of fit the overall story and to fit like the, you know, Chilean or Latin American kind of influences for this film. Like, like you said, the, the, the dummy where it's, you know, it looks similar to the test dummy or the, the kind of blocking dummy, but it feels more homegrown. You added some extra elements for the way that you would fight, like the way that you would you know fight growing up. And I love that all of this feels like a very kind of, personal recreation of things that you've seen mm. i also yeah. like that the way you describe how you fight it's almost like a like a musician who's who's jamming like you know they, they may have trained in all these different styles of music but then when you're in the moment you're just playing music you're reacting to what's happening and just trying to make something beautiful and that's how it sounds like uh your fighting style is cool cool man yeah yeah um it's, but there's no you there's no many times in life that you you have the opportunity <laughs> you know and this i believe is fist of the condor you know which is a gift from heaven to <laughs> to to do to do something so i i i better be honest and i better be you know a hundred percent honest and not try to you know uh, be something else that I, i'm not and that, that was my opportunity you know yeah, definitely um and uh, one other thing I loved is that that book, the book that you mentioned, yeah, how it had this, you know, elements of of your training style. Like, where, who made that? Did Ernesto make that? Like, where did those illustrations come from? I love how it felt like this ink and tome that had all these like secret uh, martial arts tactics and trainings and and techniques and things like that. Well, no, the the, the drawings were made by a friend of mine, Felipe, uh, the white white magic. He his name on 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 social media. I'll give it to you uh, because it's he's a very very uh, talented uh, artist. He's an amazing artist. And um, let me see if I can find because I don't want to say it wrong. Yeah, but this guy it's a very very talented uh, uh, designer or okay. I don't know what's the name. Uh, uh, illustrator or illustrator, yeah, artist. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and he actually illustrated this, and we told him the story and everything, and and he created this this designs for us, you know, and this book, you know. Yeah, and it's such a it's such a nice kind of visual at the start to really show what this film is trying to do. I thought it was just a, a great kind of example for for the the movie to kind of like anchor off of. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll see if I find it. Well, it's loading. I don't know why it's so bad. Such I'm using all. I'm using all your bandwidth for the interview. I'm. I'm taking it all. Just yeah. for this. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll take your time. Um, yeah, yeah, don't worry. All right. So, 
Yeah, so yeah, he was the one did the illustrations, and then you know, they did a good job. They did the book, it's pretty cool. Yeah, do you, do you know where that book is? Did you get to keep it, or is that the yeah, yeah. I got it, I got it. That's awesome because That's I got great. everything, I got everything because we want to continue the story, so we we save all the elements, you know. Yeah. That's oh, I mean, yeah, that that makes perfect sense, and I'm glad that that you are kind of keeping track of it. I know that you'll keep it safe. If anyone tries to take it, you will definitely defend it and definitely. Yes, keep it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this this movie had like really great critical and fan reaction when it came out. You know, what has that been like? I, I think you went to. Did you I assume you went to the premiere? Uh, I think a premiere at Alamo Draft House. Did you were you able to go to the premiere? And what has that like reception been like? What was it like when people finally got to see it? Yeah, man, it was amazing. I, I, you know, I cannot be more happy. You know, in Haya, we did really good. We were we were number one movie when it opens. You know, for it was like for a week number one, um, and we're looking forward for now the Blu-ray and DVD release. You know, and it could be a matter of weeks, and we'll know if we're going for this Condor Feast of the Condor two. So that's going to depend on the performance. And so far, it's doing great. And people are loving the movie. We're hearing a lot of good reviews. And fan people wanted to continue the story. And like get, they kind of got excited with it. And, and I'm happy because it came from a, such a, uh, I don't know, simple, honest, or, you know, truth place. You know, like... Yeah that to see people connecting with that is very nice you know yeah i mean simple and also like very vulnerable like you you know you put a lot of yourself into this and people could have watched it and said like oh like this is you know this just you stroking your ego exactly. or they could say like this is a very honest look at what it takes and it's a love letter to what influenced you and it's a very kind of entertaining movie as well so yeah there's very different reactions that they could have gone i'm glad that they're on the more positive side yeah, definitely. And there's always fears like that. You know, when you want to, when all, always when you're opening yourself in life for any reason, there's always going to be those voices of your mind trying to trying to put fear on you and trying to like like uh, threat your idea. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a beautiful challenge that at the end, if you stay honest, you cannot go wrong. And not because if people like it or not like it. At the end, is, I think there's so much. If you stay honest, you know, that if you try to please people. Because I think if we think that I am you or, or we're all connected, what at the end people want is truth. In any in any way, even if it's an uncomfortable truth or a truth that you don't like much, but as long as it's the truth, I feel people will appreciate it some way or another. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so I think that's that was a beautiful challenge with this movie. You know? Yeah, definitely. If it's if it's the truth, it's tough to have someone like I don't know go against it, right? Like this is this is. Your truth, this is your perspective. Maybe you didn't right? like it or whatever, yeah. but doesn't matter. Like, who cares? Like, at the end, that, that was my truth in that moment. Uh, and, you know, there's something always that you can get, away, you can take away from it, for sure, if you do that exercise, you know. And, and part of that fan reaction, part of that uh, tour, I saw that you were inducted into the, uh, was the, the Fists of Legend Hall of Fame, where they, like, modeled your fist and you, like, took a picture break of the board what was that like it looked like it was a fun event at least yeah that was fun man well team league has always been like such a supporter of my career and, and you know a fan of the genre i mean a fan of like he's a guy that really appreciate this you know appreciate the genre and the fans and the and the, the love for movies and i was so happy that uh, alamo draft house gave us this opportunity to to share this movie the proper way, mm -hmm. you know, in a beautiful theaters with all these beautiful stories and posters. And like, it was to be there, it was like a dream, man. Like the best theater in the world, Alamo Draft House, you know? And and this does feel like a movie that would be really fun to see in a crowd. It must've been 
nerve wracking the first time, but like once people get into it and start cheering, like that must've been a really fun experience to have people like cringe at things, you know, bad hits that you took and like cheer w when you won, you know, fight and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's nice where when you're in the theater, with a bunch of people that kind of love same type of movies, you know, mm -hmm. and that, and 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 you're showing them the movie in a in the best way possible. So it's a party, you know. It's yeah. like uh, having fun. It's like I don't know. It's very cool, you know. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And um, so the film is also coming out on Blu-ray and DVD. I don't know if you know this answer. I, I don't know either. I haven't I haven't checked, but like. I'm curious, is there like any special features in the Blu-ray? Because all of this talk about how you train for this movie, are there any behind the scenes? Are there any kind of like making of? I think that would be fascinating to watch. I don't know if you were able to film some of that when you're making it or if you have I a lot of footage. I think there is. I have, I don't know what, but I know there is. There is behind the scenes for sure because they told me that they have, but I just haven't seen it. Okay. So I don't know what they did, but I gave, I gave a Wellgo that is a distributor a lot of stuff. You know, so I don't know what they they put together, though. I gotta be honest, but uh, you know, I know that they I gave them a lot, and there's gonna be some behind the scenes, so it's gonna be fun. I'm sure they did a great job. They're doing a great job with the movie, man. I'm so happy. The poster they did, I love it. Yeah, the poster is really cool. Stay very honest again, <laughs> with the with the the genre, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I I I was just, this all the things that you talked about how like your training and, and all the things that you have done made it into the movie it makes me very curious to see some of the behind the scenes because I would love to hear more like if you have thoughts about how this has helped you or just see like some of your training would be would be really fun to see. So well we'll see. Fingers crossed the, the yeah, fingers yeah, I'm sure there's gonna be some behind the scenes for sure. Yeah. Uh awesome. you know that's that's for sure. So yeah. It's awesome. gonna be it's gonna be good man. Yeah. And we're working we're throwing some lines for the, for a comic book to continue the story too. Oh, cool. Parallel to the Feast of the Condor too. So it could turn into a very fun, fun thing, you know, if if the movie does good and and, and people, you know, uh, you know, support it, you know, the right way, support it the right way. Because sometimes people download it and they show you your love, their love, and they're like, Yeah, I so I, I it's like, look, man, I appreciate it that you want to see the movie, but if you don't wait and you don't do it the right way, there's no way people can know that you love the movie yeah yeah you know so unfortunately that's not gonna ha that's not helping anybody so it's important for people to understand that difference you know yeah especially for a small movie like this where you know it sounds like you are waiting on bated breath to see what happens to see if you could make a fist of the condor too because this is this film yeah. is clearly envisioned as multiple the film is like chapter one it starts with chapter one exactly um, exactly so yeah the Hopefully people do support it. I, I would love to see kind of where the story goes next. And yeah, finger, fingers crossed, because I'm very curious. I also yeah, want to see you man. fight yourself. Thank you, man. Thank <laughs> you, man. Um, so I'm going to switch to, I call it the lightning round. They're just very like short, lightweight questions about the film. I want to see how your personal experiences map to things in the film. They probably will map very well, because this is based on your training and, and your life. But uh, you can feel free to skip any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them fun and answerable. Uh, mm. The first question is, do condors have fists? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they probably do. Yeah, um, they just they might need to learn yeah. how, to, how to do one, but <laughs> uh... probably wouldn't be as strong as your punch, though. Your punch seemed very strong in this movie. <laughs> um, the next question was going to be like, "Have you trained in beautiful locales?" I like, I love the beach training. It sounds like you did. Like the at least yeah. for the start of this movie, That's actually, where I, where I was training yeah. to get inspired for the movie. Have you done that before? Have you like gone on like a martial arts retreat and trained somewhere like secluded yes. or beautiful? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, have you ever been in like a bar fight or a fight like outside of trainings and tournaments? Yes. I assume you won, but I, you, know, you have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I didn't. Um, it was not the best experience, to be honest, because uh, I felt really bad. And I, I realized that I, I don't like violence too much. Mm -hmm. So it, I just happened to be in a situation where I saw someone stealing a purse on the street and my reaction was just chasing the guy and just, and suddenly behind the traffic and all that, the guy show up right next to me and I had to hit him and, mm -hmm. and it was pretty bad though. I, you know, it was pretty bad and I didn't, you know, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't enjoy it, 
you know, uh, yeah, that was well, that's, one of the moments. Yeah. No, it's good. I mean, you, you used your skills when needed, but I'm glad that you didn't enjoy it. So that's not like a normal occurrence for you. Yeah. Uh, do you have photophobia? No. Okay. <laughs> was it too uh, like... <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice that was a nice way to make some really bright lights in there and, and to kind of like give your give your super personal weakness. But uh, I was I wasn't curious if that was also based on you. Um if you could create your own martial arts based on an animal, what would it be? Would it be a condor? Would it be some other animal? My own martial art based on an animal. I like the condor though. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I think uh, I want to continue actually the story to kind of develop more into it and hopefully maybe make it a more legit even to, to step it up and then make it stages and, yeah, and, 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 and put like a little doctrine to kind of people who learn it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I've been yeah. thinking about it. So. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, your answer could be I already did. I created a, a martial art for this movie based on a condor. So. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, your character in the film would like tie a knot after every fight that he won. I assume every fight you won, maybe it was after every fight. Do you have anything like that? Do you keep track of of wins and losses and things like that? Do you have anything that you kind of do to remember things, remember fights? No, no, no not like that. Not like that. But yes, that was a pretty cool little thing that we did. Yeah, yeah it, felt, it felt very kind of throwback to martial arts movies where you have like yeah, a traveling monk yeah, yeah yeah um do you have a brother in real life yes uh which one of you is the evil one well i i guess both we're just we're <laughs> waiting for the we're waiting for the non-evil one <laughs> we're waiting for the third but that didn't it didn't have it, it was a woman so i guess that's the the good one and we're yeah. the Oh, I don't know. Maybe the opposite, the other way around. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Sounds like maybe maybe yeah, a little bit of both. Sister and my brother. So. <laughs> awesome. Um, what is your favorite martial arts movie? Enter the Dragon. It's a classic. Yeah. Um, do you have like a martial arts rival? Right. I don't think so. No, you just you just win all the fights, so you don't have a rival because they they never come back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I don't. Uh, yeah. No. Right. Do you have me. someone? Do you have anyone that you like trained with regularly? Like that continues that keeps coming back and trains trains with you? Like that you would like I don't know, like a mentor or, or or really good friend that you keep training with? Yeah, through my life I have a couple, mm -hmm. but they always been different because my life has been in different places around, you know all over yeah. but yes i always in my journey end up having friends that train with me and you know they kind of is part of the journey you know yeah. definitely um so you can feel free to skip this one uh but uh in the movie your character uh, or no the evil you pees on the good you have you ever peed on someone no <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, i loved seeing all the kind of like training that you did you know it felt very kind of organic it felt very natural like what is the strangest thing you have done for training like i don't know like lifting the logs seemed pretty interesting like running on all fours is there something some very kind of weird thing that you have done for training uh, walking on fire oh wow that's yeah. a that's a what legit one on, you know when 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 you do like a barbecue and there's these things that are hot yeah, the, the, the coals yes yeah. yes <sighs> yeah. I did a that, that was when I was doing kung fu in Chile and we went to the mountains to change belts and to do a graduation mm -hmm. so the whole team go to the mountain and spend the whole weekend training you know in the in the woods and we did the ceremonial of, of walking in fire. Yeah. Oof. And the, your your feet seem to be fine for, during this movie, so you must have survived. So. Yeah, yeah, it was not that bad, actually. It was a very good mental thing, you know, mental wow. challenge. That is, that is tough. Um, have you ever had to fight your martial arts teachers? Uh, yeah. 
I, I've trained when I was do, uh, getting ready f uh, to do MMA and being a fighter. Uh, we did a lot of sparring with my the the, the my friend that was teaching me, especially jiu uh, submission fighting, because I was always being a striker. But the 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 wrestling was a new thing for me uh, back then. So yeah. he was, you know, and then we sparred a lot. So yeah. it was fun. Yeah, that makes sense. And that, that is definitely one of those things that you just have to kind of experience like if you're if you're rolling or if you're kind of doing yeah. jiu-jitsu like you have yeah. to be in those moments to really kind of be yes. able to pull from that yeah that yeah. makes sense um do you have a secret technique or like a secret move like your own special secret move mm, i got a couple though <laughs> you can't tell me right because then they won't yeah, be secret no, i can't tell you because they're <laughs> secret yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh and the last question is um is there like a, a very meaningful or impactful lesson that you've learned from like a teacher either like a martial arts teacher or maybe your mom who sounds like your first teacher like is there any lesson that you like have taken with you and like really kind of you know hit home for you mm. don't focus on the finger because you will miss all the big picture up ah, here. Interesting. I, and that 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 was a, that's from Bruce Lee. You know, the <laughs> I don't cool. know how they, they, what's the exact word, the, all the heavenly glory or something like that. But I but he means basically don't focus on the little thing because you're not seeing the big picture of things. Yeah. So the way, way that I, I took it when I was young, I never forget is like sometimes in life. You focus on the event and you judge that event right there in that moment. And you don't trust that that's going to result on something huge that maybe you're not seeing now because you're too focused on the small little detail instead of seeing the whole big picture of it. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. But, and Bruce Lee is a great, uh, a great person to take a lesson from. And I love how that kind of like, that also seems to be how this movie came about, right? You weren't focusing on, you know, your situation being stuck in quarantine. You you know, if you would have just focused on that, it might have been very kind of sad. But you were like, use that to then create this bigger movie that is able to kind of like go out into the world. Yeah, yeah, man. It's like, yeah. And I, th I think I need to take that lesson into account because my wife always tells me to, to stop focusing on little things and just let it go. <laughs> I'm yeah, very bad about I mean, that. <laughs> trust. If you, if you start trusting more, mm -hmm. you've got and life and you you make decisions from there i believe you have a much more beautiful life instead of getting your brain there and making and 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 and, and you pay attention to little details or fears or privileges where it takes you to a different direction because the, the decision you take and the action you take it will take you this way yeah. instead of you you take the decision and you take that action from your gut from the, this feeling of like that we all have mm -hmm. we just sometimes some people just shut that down because they their head commands their life and sometimes that is disconnected with your instinct and sometimes this is telling you something that is even more much more important so sometimes we need to learn how to listen to that and just trust that and even though our head is telling us no 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 you know so it's a, you learn this, you learn this, and then you 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 do it, and then you start liking it, and you do it more, and then your life starts taking a very interesting path, you know. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely a good kind of life philosophy, a good way to kind of like approach things, and to make sure that you don't just get like you said too bothered by the little things. You just kind of like focus on the big picture, which is a a thing that I think we all we all need to know. So we all need to take into account. Um, so this film is coming to digital DVD and Blu-ray on May 23rd, 2023. So people can check it out uh, from the cover of their own home. They can see other special features. You're out promoting the movie. Um, but I imagine you have other projects on the horizon. After people see you in Fist of the Condor uh, on digital and, and Blu-ray and DVD, what else can they look forward to next from you? Well, they can see John Wick. is also coming in Blu-ray and DVD in May. I think it's actually the same day, 23rd. Oh wow, that's, that's amazing! It's Marcos Aurora Day. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Aurora Day. <laughs> yeah, so they can check that out for sure. I'm sure they, if they didn't see it in the theater, I really tell them that they miss a big one because that's an amazing movie. So yeah, they can see it there. 
they, they can see it on DVD, Blu-rays coming up now. And yeah, I got some cool projects coming. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm working hard and hopefully I have some more news soon, you know. I, I'm waiting with bated breath because both this movie and John Wick 4 were, were very entertaining and, and kind of really beautiful martial arts movies. And I can't wait to see what comes next from you. So this is uh, Marcos Aurora, the star, sounds like a you know, part creator, part choreographer, uh, part kind of like life story for Fist of the Condor is coming to Blu-ray, DVD and digital on May 23rd, 2023. This is a fascinating conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was really, really insightful. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That was Marcos Aurora, the star of Fist of the Condor, which comes to digital Blu-ray and DVD on May 23rd, 2023. It is a stylish, fun, throwback martial arts film that has such a unique feel and some really, really good action. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.